What is up guys? Joe Holland here. I am out here on my home lake and I'm going to show you guys an age old tradition jigging freshwater smelts out of deep water on the ice. Got a brutal terrible day. It's blowing straight sideways out of the east. Fish bite the least. If the wind blows out of the west, fish fight the best. If the wind blows out of the east, fish bite the least. But I think I can still catch some of these jack smelt, is what we call them here in Maine. Freshwater jack smelt, which are also rainbow smelt. Same ones that are in the ocean, but they don't have the opportunities to eat as much as the ones in the ocean and the river running brackish water river running smelt. What I'm doing is I got a medium light rod. I like I prefer something with a fast tip. So, cause I'm in 40 foot to 70 foot of water, depending on where I find them or where I've set up. Usually they're coming in in schools and hopefully we're gonna jig some up. I'm using the electronics today. I'm using the Garmin Live Scope and these fish are anywhere from this big to this big. And my jigs that I'm using, I got a little Haley jig or a size four Swedish pimple. So they're real small, so they don't show up great in 40 foot of water. So I'll be zoomed way in. It'll be a little pixelated, but you'll be able to see how these fish react and how they swirl around the bait and, and smelt swim in circles a lot. So it's pretty cool. The smelt, freshwater smelt are the French fry of the fish world. They taste great. They're not really big. They're not filling, but if you catch enough of them, it makes for one heck of a tasty meal. Stay tuned. I'll show you how to catch these things, what they look like, and maybe we'll even show you how to eat them. Got him. All right, first one, just getting setting up. Just setting up. Got him. There it is. Popped right off. Not quite ready. To, wasn't quite ready for you. Got him. Got him. Stale. Stale. Nice. Oh, to yellow. What the heck is he doing? There's some smelt. He just puked up. Yellow. That's not what we're after. He's eating smelt too. Pretty nasty. Oh yeah. Shoot. He hit. I hope he got a taste of it. Dang it. <laughs> it's a light bite when they do hit. He must have felt that hook or something. Usually they'll come back. They're so aggressive. Today they're definitely off. I think we got some water clarity issues going on. I gotta check and see if I got a piece of bait on there. That guy is on it. 
I do not. That's why. You gotta give him a little piece of meat to target. That's why he's on it, but he's not eating it. This guy's catchable if I can get that piece of meat in front of him. So that's all it is, just a little tiny piece of meat below it. And this shouldn't take long if I can get that down to him. For bait today, guys, we're just using cut up little tiny pieces of shiner. Anything fresh and a little bloody seems to work pretty good. Oh, we got a couple on the screen there. Oh, something just, that piece of chum I threw down that the perch spit out just drifted on the screen and something is all over it. That's cool. Let's hurry up and get this down and see if we can catch them. Whatever that is, is definitely showing that he's hungry. Come on, get down there. There we go. We're on the screen. We are on the screen and there's an active fish there. Hit bottom, let him know we're here. Lift up. Looks like he's keyed in on that piece of chum. But he'll eat something after that, I think. It's right under me now. They are finicky today, folks. It'll be a hard video to shoot today if they're going to act like that. We'll put it a little closer to bottom. He's on it. He's on it. Got him. Got him! Woo! All right, tough bite today. Nice. There's a little jack smelt. A little smaller today than normal. A little rainbow jack smelt right there, guys. Not much to him. But that's one right there. Get him in the bucket with the other guy. So they're not too lonely. Hard to call them a jack smelt at that size, but it's a lot bigger than a regular smelt or a pin smelt. But they're definitely hard to catch at that size. I wish that when we get into the bigger ones, it'll be a lot easier. There's one to the side. Got a looker. Got a looker on the side. Can't tell if it's a perch or a smelt right now. Let's see if he swims in circles. Not very aggressive, whatever it is. Got him! Might be a smelt. Feels like it. Yep, there it is. A little bit better size. Man, they are tough to catch today. Normally they're right on fire and it doesn't take much to catch them. Spit that out. Spit out me bait. Got it. All right, guys, there's a smelt. They got pretty sharp teeth in them. But there's one right there. That is a rainbow jack smoke. You go in the bucket. This is a little Haley jig. It's got pretty good weight to it for its size. It's got a little tiny drop chain hook, which I like. I, I'd go up a size on the hook if I changed anything than the one that comes with it. But on that little drop chain hook, you want to get some kind of piece of meat, whether it's a worm or a piece of a shiner like I'm fishing, or you could even put a piece of smelt on there. Because they're probably not going to hit your lure. But they'll hit that they'll hit that uh, piece of meat they're really they're really carnivores they eat anything they can they eat each other when they can oh, another one there he's circling 
we need a second one to get a little competition but they circle like crazy Got him. He came flying off the bottom. We got a little school there now for a change. What was that? Another one. You want to keep them fired up when you get them fired up. It's like any kind of school fishing. The meat, the hook's so tiny and the meat's so small that I'm struggling right now to get that hook through it. Come on, get in there. I think I'm on it. All right, there's, looked like there were about four there a second ago. Another piece of meat right here. Starting to get them fired up a little bit. Come on, get down there. I like to use a heavy jig so it gets down quicker to them. The heavier the jig, you give up a little bit of feel. Oh yeah, there's one coming. He's on me. He's on it. Bite it. He's on it. There's one, one coming up. Him. Shoot, did he get my bait? Got him! That was a good hit. There we go, they're getting a little bigger now. When you miss them, stay right with them. It's not like a trout or even a bass. They usually stick around and come back. They almost get angry that they miss the eating. So he came back and ate that pretty good. I got him pretty deep. If you don't have electronics and you're trying this, it's a good idea just to bounce off the bottom three or four times and pick it up and hold it about two foot off bottom and just watch your rod tip or feel for it. So if I didn't have electronics, I would just hit the bottom like that, lift up about, oh, two foot off bottom and just hold it there. That seems to drive him pretty nuts and it's visible for them up off the bottom and they'll they'll hug the bottom pretty well unless they're in a big school and they feel safe in a big school and they'll come off the bottom and later in the day and you get low light conditions the, when the plankton's up higher and the little fish vertebrae or your vertebrae fish the little tiny things and real small minnows are up then they'll come up and get off the bottom but for the most part even though they are super aggressive and they eat everything they can they are the prey of everything out here, including me. And they know that, so their safety in the bottom and their safety in numbers. Usually, oh, here comes one. Is he on? No, I thought he was on. I didn't feel him, but it looked like he had it. Usually this is a pretty good numbers game and you can get that first one to bite you can get a whole bunch in here feeding but today they're kind of scattered the weather's been really weird lately we had a crazy warm up uh 65 degrees the other day oh here we go and it warmed up to 65 degrees and we had a bunch of melt off and we had a real good rain storm with a bunch of runoff and then it 
they got down into the single digits again for the last couple days and then today it's kind of breaking again and snowing so when you get weather patterns like that a lot of times it screws the fishing up in the winter a more stable pattern seems to get them to bite pretty good for most species but normally i would have about 12 to 15 on that screen and they just compete here comes one yeah i must not have a piece of bait on there i'll give it another another look and then i'm going to bring it up and make sure i have a piece of bait on there sometimes when you hit bottom it jars that bait off i like to hit bottom to bring them in you know make noise stir up a little bit of mud and try to get their attention but a lot of times that bait will fall off your hook when you're hitting bottom because it slackens it on the hook all right let's check and see if we have any any meat on there for them yeah there's a piece of meat on there it doesn't look too white if it gets too white and bleached out i take it off if it's if it's super clean piece of meat they don't seem to like it i think they do smell and they definitely taste a lot i picture hitting the bottom as like ringing that dinner bell because i'm sure they eat a lot off the bottom so i don't mind hitting the bottom especially when nothing's around i'll bounce it off the bottom and hopefully they either feel that or see it or or it stirs up enough mud to get their attention and then i'll do the same thing up in the water column try to get somebody's attention get a visual for them we'll hit bottom a couple times ring that dinner bell pick it up there's definitely a couple there on the bottom there's one under me he's on me ah eat it oh we got a looker there yep he came up hot on that lift straight up off the bottom got him another one down there nice getting a little bit bigger baby tarpon nice there he is guys <laughs> that was cool that was on a lift that guy came shooting up off the bottom looks like there's a couple down there waiting for me on the bottom let's see if he comes to meet it most of my hits today have been within two foot of the bottom so i'm trying to kind of stay in that area i love being able to get bites you know four five six seven foot up off the bottom usually you get a school in in on you there and it's just easy pickings there's two or three on the bottom right now Let's see if i can get one to come up and get aggressive here he comes here he comes here he comes did he eat nope he didn't eat got him pretty far up now if you can keep one there sniffing on it like that see those are the hard ones to catch that are just sitting there sniffing on it but usually if a second one comes in when there's one sniffing on it it's like a hundred percent catch on that second one they don't mess around they they know that if they wait they're not going to get a meal now, i got a head on there and i don't know if they'll eat the head or not if it's if it's appetizing for them Oh, he didn't eat. Yeah, I might have to go back to a piece of side meat. It's hard to say because today's just a tough bite anyway. We need a whole school over here of a bunch of them. That makes it a lot of fun. Today it's it's tough pickings. You're picking one at a time. 
Okay, I think there's one on the bottom. Let's see if he comes up. Yep, there's one there. He's coming up right now. Guys. Ah, He's really looking it over. Let's see if I can get him to do something stupid. Come on. Come on up. They won't pass that 35 mark. They will when they're hungry, I promise you that. Oh, here comes one. Coming one way up. Oh, he bit too. Shoot, he bit. He'll bite again. Ah, oh, he bit again. What is wrong with you? Eat it. Here he comes again. Oh, no. Oh, for three. He must be nipping at that meat. Oh, for three on that guy. <laughs> Here he is. He's still under me. I don't know if he stole it or what. Got him. There he is. That one's tight to the bottom. Give me that bait. So if you're feeling for them, I do a lot of sight fishing on the electronics with them and see like try to watch them eat. But if you're actually feeling for them, it's usually one quick thunk. You don't get to feel a pull or anything like that. So. It's important to use a rod. You don't want to use a rod that's actually too soft for this or too too slow. You want a nice fast action. You know, you don't want anything heavy because you got to be able to feel that too, but there's a fine line and I've used, man, I can't even get a hook in that. I've used some rods that you think are be, would be perfect for this. They're super light and light action. I actually prefer a medium heavy, like 20 to 24 to 27 inch rod. Something that's quick, because you've got to be quick on that hook set, because they don't stay there very long. And you're fairly deep, comparatively to the size of this fish. These things are only like this big, and you're in 40 foot of water, so. That's why I like a little bit of a quick action, or a quick tip. And then when you're fighting them, you don't really need a lot of bend for the fight. It's just a matter of getting them up here as quick as you can and keeping... Here comes one. Yep. See, he bit. I watched, I watched that one hit on the tip. This feels pretty fat, like a perch or a really good one. Yeah, that's a bigger one. Nice. There goes my bait. Come on out of there. They're getting a little bit more aggressive now. They're starting to participate. I'm seeing more on the screen at least. <sighs> Tip's freezing up. Where'd that piece of bait go? Come on, get down there. Come on, get down there. There's more down there. All right, here we go. One to the side coming in pretty hot. I haven't been able to get a bite more than two foot off the bottom yet, which is fine. This one's coming in slow. I like him to come in a lot more aggressively. Now visually with the electronics and the live scope, I can clearly see that He's not on, and a lot of times, a lot of times when I talk about sight fishing these things on the electronics, I'm looking for them to be super tight to the jig, 
and then a color change, meaning I'm getting even better. You know, that puts them even tighter to the jig. And then I just slowly lift, and if I feel anything while I'm lifting, it's basically the hook set. So that's, that's what I mean by sight fishing them. Now, if you're not sight fishing them, even if you don't have electronics, if you just watch the end of that tip and you have a pretty, pretty light rod, you can watch your tip thunk, because that's how they hit. It's a quick thunk. It's not a steady pull. It's not a thunk pull. It's just a thunk, just a little tiny thunk. And I think they're giving all they got, but that's all they got, especially at that depth. But some days they're more aggressive and you just, you can do this up and down with your jig like this, and then they'll come in and they'll jump on it when you stop. Today, just from watching my screen and how most of the hits have been, I've pretty much got most of the hits and the interest by putting it on the bottom and just reeling it ab about two foot up to right there. And if nothing follows, you can put it right back down and just go right there. And then if one comes straight up vertical at it, that's how I've been getting most of the bites today. So that electronics tells me that. And then I'm going to I'm going to key on that a little bit more today. You know, I'll still try some other things because I know eventually they'll turn on as a school. But for the most part, I'm going to be just hitting bottom and lifting up and seeing if anything follows. If anything follows, I've been holding it pretty still. And that seems to be, get, here comes one right there. Hold it still. He sees it. Should be a bite. Oh, he nipped it. I think I missed him. He's still there. All right, now he's looking it over. When I move it, he is a little interested. Oh, he moved it. He might still bite. Yeah, he's he might give me a third. Nope. Let's give him a new piece of meat. Oh, there's two down there now. I gotta hurry up and get down there. Come on, hurry. There's three down there, hurry. Ah, oh, there they go. Hopefully they come back. All right, I think there's one on me already. Yeah, here comes one. Man, they're fussy today. Whew. They are hard to catch today, guys. That's kind of the rule of video and fishing. No, it's a bad weather day. It's we, We're right in the midst of a pretty serious cold front. The water is definitely murked up. And we got a pretty good wind out there. It's blowing pretty well straight sideways out there. This is about as bad as I've ever seen them hug the bottom, which is making them really hard to catch. Here comes one, vertical. Ah, catch him. Got him. All right, that was the highest one yet. Nice, he feels pretty decent size considering. It's hard to say that on these little guys, but that's a good one right there. Nice. All right, there's a pretty good one. There he is. Freshwater jack smelt. That's a rainbow smelt right there that is basically landlocked. It'd be similar to like a salmon and a landlocked salmon. He had it that time.
All right, here comes that second one I was telling you guys about. So I got one working me right now pretty hard. Oh, the second one gave up a little too early. Here it comes. See that second one? Oh, he rocked me. That should have been a catch. Got him. It was a catch. He rocked me hard. That second one's a hundred percent bite every time. Nice. Cool. Got him up in the water column. Starting to get a little more active. He's sitting there waiting. He's going to be a little more active when I drop down to him. You watch. I got a shot at catching this guy. That second one is 100% every time. I stop even worrying about that first one when that second one comes in. Alright. He sees it. Here he comes. I'm going to make him work a little. Hit it. Hit it. That's crazy high. Can't seem to get him to bite. If I can get those other ones interested. This guy, yeah, see how the second ones, second and third are coming in? They're going to him. They might not even see me yet. missing one we got them on the screen though it's a different ball game right now folks we got them lit up there's one nice all right this is how the screen's supposed to look i got them scattered and i need some bait that's why you cut it up ahead of time give me that piece right there uh, hurry, 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 keep them active. Uh, okay, keep them active. That's where two people really help. Ah, uh, they're gone. All right, that, that's all right. They're not going far, I promise you that. Come on, get down to them. Go. This is exciting. Fishing's fishing. I don't care what it is. I get excited over these guys just as much as a giant trout. Alright, there's a couple still on the screen. I'm going to hit bottom and do the lift. See if I can get them up in my realm. There are a lot. Oh, here he comes. Don't stop. I think they're a lot easier to catch the higher up you get them. Oh shoot, I had one on me. I didn't even know it. Yep, got him. That was a sight fish. Nice. We're getting a little bigger. They get it deep. You can't even see. They're, they look so small. Pretty good one there, guys. The bucket's starting to get a little color to it. We like to see that. Oh, 
God, this is freezing right into my reel every time. I should have brought the heater. Not so much for me, but for the gear. <laughs> my gear is not as tough as I am, I guess. Let's go. Does he see it? He sees it. Here he comes. Got him! Sight fished. Never felt that one hit. All right, we're jigging smelt now, guys. We are jigging smelt. Typical smelt lived to be about five years old, and these jack smelt that get up as big as 12 to 14 inches will live as long as 10 or 11 years old. Everything wants to eat them. They're like the French fry of the lakes. Because they taste good. Oh, got one on me already. Oh, he hit. He hit. He hit again. I need you to bite that hook. Here he comes, straight up. Did he bite it? Did not. What is going on with this bait? Yeah. You can pretty much tell by watching that electronics what the situation is of the bait on your hook. When they come in that hot and aggressive, and you don't feel them, or they don't bite, or they just kind of shy away, there's a pretty good chance you don't have a piece of meat on there. It's hard to catch them on just a bare hook. You can when they get aggressive and they're big schools. Oh, he flew, he flew off the bottom. What was that all about? We're gonna find out. I think this is a perch or a bass. I don't believe this is a smell. I think that's a perch. Just by the way, he came off the bottom. Yep, that's a yellow, little yellow patch. Yellow perch. I, I did notice a couple times when I set my rod down and it sat there for about 10 seconds, I'd have a fish interested. So I'm gonna try doing that now. I'm gonna try to just leave it still, two foot off the bottom and see if that'll work. Hard to do because as a fisherman you think you can do better just moving it. That's what I like about the electronics is you can really key in on how they're reacting. You know like so far the best bites have come from hitting the bottom and then just reeling straight up two foot. Looking for a follow. If nothing happens drop it right back down do it again. Holy cow it's, it's getting raw out there fellas. He's blowing like a sieve out there. He's straight sideways on us. Come on back, smelts. That's the jig I'm using right there, guys. Little Haley jig. It's got a little tiny chain with a drop hook. Small, small hook on it. I don't even know what size it is, but kind of a natural color. I'd be curious trying like a brighter color just to get their attention. And then a little tiny piece of meat on that hook. And that's pretty much the answer. I don't know if you need a leader or not. This is like, I think I have like six pound test fluoro coming off like whatever for braid. Weather today is not good. It is blowing straight sideways and it's coming out of the dreaded east. It's blowing some snow in with it. And we're at about zero degrees Fahrenheit, so not pleasant out there. I'm so glad I got this shack. I wouldn't be able to catch these fish without it. The bite is so light. I'm sight fishing most of them off the electronics, but not all of them. Probably 30% of them I get by feel or watching the rod tip. And there's no way you'd be able to do that on a, if you were outside today. Very, very cold. I probably should have brought my little heater. I might run back and grab it, but only trouble with that is I'd have to unhook this thing and it's blowing hard enough. I'd be worried because this doesn't have screwed peg down. I'd have to drill a hole and maybe throw a bunch of slush on it so it doesn't go anywhere. 
Swedish pimples, another good bait for these smelt. That's a pretty good historic bait. And I like the single drop hook if they still put them in the package. I don't know if they put them in with every size or not. Let's see. Yeah, there it is. Okay, that's perfect. That's a pretty good size hook right there. It's actually not too big, believe it or not. This is the size 4 Swedish pimple. And it comes with a treble hook on it, which isn't bad. But I've found I get a lot better hookups. And a lot easier to take them off the hook if you change out that hook with the one that comes in the package. And it's a longer shank. Let's see. It's right there. It's a lot longer shank. It's got a decent bend to it. So you can get a pretty good chunk of meat on there. And it gets it further away from the, the steel of the Swedish pimple. Oh, we got one coming in finally. Let's see if he sees it. to find out what it is. Got him. Whatever it is. Feels like a smoke. Yeah, nice. Might not be a smoke. Oh, it is. What happened? He got all twisted up. Cool. All right. Another rainbow jack smelt. There he is. Put him in the bucket. They, you wouldn't believe it, but these guys got pretty sharp teeth on them. Pound for pound. Let's just say we're lucky that they don't grow more than 12 inches or so because there wouldn't be anything left to grow in the lake. They're so aggressive. They're big time cannibals. They eat their own. They eat a ton of small fish. They eat small bugs they'll eat dead stuff live stuff doesn't matter so there's the number four swedish pimple with that drop hook you can go down one more size and still be in a good range on the size of the swedish pimple but i do like the length of that hook for the dropper the advantage to that hook is you can put a lot bigger chunk of meat on it and when they're aggressive having the bigger chunk of meat's a really good idea and I don't know about outside of Maine, but I don't believe there's anything even combined that has caught more fish in Maine than a Swedish pimple over the years. It has been a weapon on just about every species and every size and every color. Very, very popular bait. It's kind of like one time I was reading that the 3030 had killed more deer in Maine than every single caliber combined. Kind of like the 30-30 of ice fishing. Got him. There were two. I'm going to try to get back down to the other guy. Decent one there. Ah, this is fun. Doing stuff like this will 100% make me a better fisherman when it comes to jigging togue or jigging cusk or jigging any other types of fish. If you can catch the little ones and the harder ones to catch like this, it makes the bigger ones way easier to catch. Sometimes I just don't think of the comfort of my equipment when it's cold out. I got some smelts. Do you want any for dinner tonight? <laughs> Where did you get up? I'm out. I'm out here right now. It's blowing straight sideways. You are nuts. I know it. It's bad out here. Yeah. It's blowing yeah, like you're... a sieve. You're crazy. I know it. Bobby, do you want any smelts for supper? Joe's out fishing right now. Oh my God, is he crazy? That's what I told him. <laughs> I'll let you talk to the bride. Okay. Okay, have fun. Thanks. Jeez, uh, you got any place that you can shelter in? I'm in a shelter. I'm in a little tiny pop-up shelter. Oh, you are? 
Yeah, yeah I've been catching smelt for like the last, oh, I don't know, hour or so. You've been jigging? Yeah, I'm jigging. I got the electronics going and I'm just wailing on these smelt. Oh my, are you having fun? Oh yeah, it's a blast. <laughs> It's pretty oh my God. I wish I brought my heater out because everything's freezing. Why did you why did you go smelt on our day like today? I don't because I can. Yeah, Jesus. Good. I feel I feel bad for you guys. I didn't know if you had groceries or not. <laughs> yeah. We docked it right up. Oh man. It's... Why don't you come over and have lunch here and say the hell with the smelting? Well, I I got like a half bucket full right now. I was just seeing if you wanted to cook some up and eat them. Now? Oh, it'd take me probably a good half hour to get off the lake. Yeah, well, you, you want to come for lunch and have some fried rice? Uh, I don't, would it go good with smell? Yeah, it'd be beautiful with smell. <laughs> Sounds good, let's do it. Okay, great, it'll alrighty. I'm guessing it'll take me probably, oh, about a half hour to get over there. Oh yeah, he'll cook them on the wood stove. Okay, I'll I'll be over right. as soon as I can. All right, bye bye. Okay, bye. Back in the old days, this was a really big deal, jigging smelt out here. There were a couple guys that were real good at it. I heard from an old timer in town, and he would always have two buckets with him. One, they'd be throwing the smelt in, and the other bucket would have like two or three smelts in it. That was it. And if somebody came along by truck or snowmobile or even walked up and he saw him coming out the window of his shack, he'd pull out that bucket with only three in it. And they'd ask, geez, how's it going out here? How are you guys catching them? He'd say, terrible. But out here all day, all we got these these three right here. And that other bucket that he was sitting on or that was underneath him would have about 150 in there. Couldn't even see the bottom of it. Because if guys saw that he had a bucket full, they would set up shop right next to him or on him or in the hole or the next day in the hole. So he did a pretty good job of defending that spot, I guess. Got him. Got him on the old lift. All right. Nice little eater right there. Okay. That was a pretty good one to end on, I think. All right, for transporting these things, I like to put them in a bag like that, like a bait bag. And then you can fold that over at least once and just wrap a rubber band around them. And those, they'll actually stay alive. People say they're squirrely, but I think those are the ones in the bait shops and like the pins. But those bigger ones stay alive really well if you want to use them for pike bait or if you want to eat them. But that's how I'm going to transport those. I'm going to take this down and head over to Donnie and Barbie's and see if they want to eat some of these things. Ooh, she is pretty bad out here right now, fellas. We got to go somewhere that way. bite out there so I wish I caught more but that's all I could do they're all oh, alive. a bad size huh? oh those are perfect good those eaters are great yeah oh wonderful the only way to cook anything is with cast iron I think you're putting me right to shame Donnie because that's what all my viewers tell me I need to start doing yeah I got that and I got my LL bean Trusty trout knife. Oh, I like that. That's a reproduction of the original. Okay, let me look. They came out with this okay, on their all anniversary. Right, okay. These are good mess of them. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. Hey, Joey, what's going on? Hi, I've brought you some delicious smell. Oh my God, Joey, they're beautiful. Aren't they? Look at this one. They're, they're rainbow smelts, what they're called. You can see why. Wow, they're gorgeous. Very nice, Joey. Thank you. Oh. I'm pretty excited about them. Okay, I'm pretty <laughs> excited about having you in my kitchen. <laughs> Thank you. I wish there were more of them. First, I'm going to, before I start cleaning them, I'm going to take some bacon grease. Oh, wow. We save our bacon grease to cook with and vegetable oil. Whoa. He saves a lot of bacon grease. Darn good right there. Oh, oh yeah, I'm that's my chicken. Soup. I'm making a homemade chicken soup right there. Mom. I was uh, I was questioning my sanity when I was coming off the lake. Yeah. It is brutal out there. Yeah. Joey is crazy. I'm telling you. Oh, the guy is not. I want to show you how bad it is outside. I'm going to just open up my door for you. It doesn't look that bad, but it's bad. I hope so. This is going to be so good. Do you know what these are? These are the French fries of the lake. Oh, I know they're French fries <laughs> of the lake. Everything eats them. Oh my God, the poor things are alive though. He's... They won't be for very long. Oh, geez, no. Oh, this one's got roe in it. Oh, Donnie's gonna Whoa. eat that. Look at that, look at that. You like nice that, Donnie? eggs, I like it. I really don't need to slit these up. No, slit them up so you can get them all crispy inside. Get the guts right out of them. Ooh, or that one's got eggs too. We got a lot of eggs here, huh? Yeah. It's amazing how much color they have to them. When I caught them, they were really white. Oh, really? They were? Yeah, you couldn't see the color. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, the, the lake's got murky since the last couple of days. Why is that, Joey? I think that... All that rain we had, and then the the melt off where it was 65, and then all oh, the yeah, runoff. right, a lot, oh, of, yeah. a lot of surface water going in. It might have even turned over, I don't know. I think this one's got row in it, too. Yeah, have they all had row? Yeah, three, three out of four, or two out of three. Look at that, Whoa. beautiful. You remember catching these when you were younger, Donnie? Oh yeah, we we used to go uh, saltwater smelting, and you'd catch smelts about this size, maybe a little smaller. Yeah. About this size, and you'd go in the brooks, and they'd run up the brooks in the springtime, which used to be a lot of fun because there used to be a lot of drunks there, and they'd be falling down, hooting and hollering and. <laughs> carrying on something fierce and that was part of the entertainment and then they changed the rules and you had to fish them out you know you could walk in the brooks then but they fish and game thought that that was destroying the you know spawning areas oh, okay. so they made you go use a net mm -hmm. stay out of the brooks did you jig for these things? Yeah, they were in 40, 38 to 40 foot of water. Oh, no kidding. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And I, so would you put your electronics down and, yeah, yeah. and find where they were? Mm -hmm. what, what, tell me what you have for an electronics, Joey. A Garmin Live Scope. So you can literally watch them swimming around down there. Oh, wow. Is yeah. that really true? I always thought that was just a fake thing. No, it's for real. It is for real? Yeah, it's a weapon. <laughs> I just thought that that was just some kind of fake news. No, you could go out there and catch them without electronics, but it just makes it so much more fun and more efficient if you have electronics. It keeps you entertained too. You know what's going on down there. There's no guessing. Yeah. Because I had times when, you know, I'd go a half hour and they weren't biting. Yeah. And if I didn't have the electronics, I'd think, well, I'm in a bad spot or they're not here anymore. But with the electronics, you can still see them down there. So they just weren't biting. Right. It was a tough day, really. You know, well, I would think it a, would be. <laughs> this is a male. Yeah. He has. Why? Because of this white 
Oh, this is gross. You're not going to eat that, are you? <laughs> no, I'm not going to eat that. Okay, phew. No, I'm... <laughs> You're just saving well, it that out. That has to go with that to make an egg. I'm making <laughs> make more fish. smelts. <laughs> yeah. What are you using for a knife, Donnie? This is an L.L. Bean. Where trout, do you keep that knife. knife? In a special place. Yeah, right. I've never seen that knife. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the only time you do see this knife. <laughs> You don't think I'm going to let you have your paws on it, do you? Yeah, I That's do. That's a special fish in the That's a knife. special. Yeah, it's special, all right. He's special, all right. He is. A pretty good little pile of French fries, huh? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be delicious. I can't remember the last time I've had a smelt feed, to be honest with you. Oh, my God, I love them. Do you? Oh, I Jeez, love I'll them. I'll get you some more. I love them crispy, you know, like, oh, I love them. I but, usually don't slit these up the belly, but since Barbara's here... She seems to think that we want to do this. Yeah. You don't gut them usually? Well, see, when I take the heads off, the oh. little gut comes right out with it. Oh, yeah. So, you know. Huh. Okay. Now, let's rinse these off. Okay. Now, what would the... Uh, I, use, I use just flour and salt and pepper to roll these things in and sometimes I put in a, just a little bit of cornmeal so depending on what you would like however you do it I like it I'm going to put a little bit of cornmeal They're fresh. <laughs> they are fresh. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. Now I'm gonna let that heat up just a little bit. Let me let me check the fire and see how we're doing. Oh, we got a nice bit of coals. I'll add a stick. I think it was boiling. Yeah, it was earlier. I rolled that. I rolled those eggs in flour, Donnie. You did what? I rolled the eggs in flour. All right. That seems pretty hot. See that? Mm. Now these are so fresh that they may jump out <laughs> of the fry pit. Look at that! Look at them curl! Wow! <laughs> you can't keep them flat! They're so fresh! <laughs> oh my god, Joey! They're swimming! Joey, those are amazing! Right? They really are! We are lucky today. Lucky, lucky, lucky. Wow. Well, you only have to cook these like a couple minutes or three minutes aside, but it's going to be hard to keep them flat. <laughs> no, don't keep them flat. Don't? No. So you don't even scale them. We just need the scales, right? Yeah, we eat the whole thing. Except I don't need to tail them. Oh, you don't? You know, you can you can almost, leaving the tail on, you can just peel the meat right off the backbone. Oh, yeah? Joey, what do you want? I got ginger ale. Oh, man. Do you have any hot chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she does. Or coffee? Yes, I do. Or hot no, coffee? I have hot cocoa. You do? I do. Honest to God. How do you like that request, huh? Oh, my God. I just well, don't Right out of nowhere with that request. No, or coffee. No. Anything you want hot. Want mocha? Any, anything hot. Want mocha? Sure. That'd be great. Thank you. Well, oh, these are hot. These are so fresh that, you know, normally they don't curl like this. <laughs> That's the freshest I've ever seen them. Joey, 
Honey, how about you? Do you want a cup of coffee, a mocha, or what? Uh, no, I'm, I'm just going to have water, I think. That looks tremendous. Actually, you know, if you put a little salt on this roll, mm -hmm. you can eat it raw. Caviar. It's delicious. You put it on crackers. Oh, man. <laughs> you think you died and gone to heaven. Really? Oh, yeah. yeah. Do now will you eat those on crackers or do oh. you just eat that? I'll eat it just plain. On a fork. Yeah. Stay together pretty good. Yeah. So they, they come, well, they're kind of like in a little sack, you know, like. You see how they're falling all apart? Yeah. Now, freshwater smelts, which are, I call them needle smelts. Mm hmm You can eat those whole. Yeah, head and all? Head and all. I mean, we used to fry them up in a fry pan. Don't even clean them, you know, because there's very little gut in them. And eat them like french fries. Just the smaller version of these? Yeah, but they're fresh, you know. Well, these were freshwater. Right, these are freshwater too, but I mean, these are like the little needle smells, I call them. Oh, yeah. You gotta try some of that. I'll try. Know. I'll definitely try some of it. Doesn't look like it was cooked long, but it's probably cooked enough. Huh? Oh my god! Yeah, they probably just overcooked. Eat oh really? Yeah. Okay, I cannot wait for this. Well, look how you just peel the meat right off. Oh, okay. That is the backbone. Oh. Yeah. Tail and bone come yeah. right out. In fact, the bones oh. are so small that you probably could eat them with no problem. Joey, these are delicious. Are they edible? They're so sweet. Well, broke the They're tail off that one. Mm. Thank you, Joey. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank wow. you for cooking wow. them and having me over. Oh, thanks for being here. <laughs> wow, that looks good, Donnie. That is. Oh my God, that fresh. is so good. Yeah. Take one of these. I, I, I want to film you doing it, Joey. Taking one of those? Yeah. Uh-huh. I've never eaten these before, but... Joey, a real outdoorsman has got to have... It's, it's kind of like eating cornmeal. Yeah. But, you know, kind of that texture. Not much taste other than fish. Do you like it, Joey? It was worth eating. Yeah? Yeah. That want to have another one? No. I'll leave it. <laughs> it, it was worth eating. <laughs> It was worth eating, but I'll let Donnie polish those yeah, up. Yeah, I'm going to let... No, no, go ahead, go ahead. I'm letting Donnie polish them up, too. What do you think of that, Joey? I could eat that every day. Mm. Oh, I could, too. Mm -hmm. French fries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Mm. You have to eat these with your fingers. Oh, yeah, don't eat yeah. them with your fingers. You, can, you, can you eat them with a yeah. fork? No. Okay, no. good. You can throw the fork away. Yeah. This is medieval eating. Boy, I sure wish Stevie were here to <laughs> enjoy this. <laughs> He'd uh, like it, I think. I think he would. Yep. Yeah. Oh, those are coming out nice and clean for you. These are so good. Yeah. You're doing uh, a good job on those. Oh, yeah, I'm a... Oh, she's an expert. I'm an expert eater, But you, don't eat, you do eat the tail or you don't eat the tail? I don't eat the tail. No. Are you going to eat the tail? Yeah. It's kind of crunchy. You I, usually, crunchy. I usually do like on a brook trout. I eat the, the tail and the fins. This one, I got some roe in there with it. But yeah, a lot of times when I'm eating brook trout, I just, if they're small, I'll just eat the tail. Yeah. You do? Mm -hmm. I'll eat the next tail, but. It's like a I potato chip. It's like, yeah. Mm. I love the skin. Wow, that's good. Aren't they delicious? Mm hmm. My grandfather, who lived in Rhode Island, would come up to Maine. And in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, there was this restaurant called Yokins.
Oh, yeah, y o k e n yeah. apostrophe s. Yeah. And he would always order fried smelts. I mean, that's oh. what I remember about it. Because, you know, I, th I do, very few places have them. Moody's. And, and Moody's, yeah, Moody's have them at certain times. Oh, I didn't day. know that. Yeah. 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 Oh, you know, when they're running. Well, Jeez. Yeah. yeah. So. Oh. But he would, he would stop at Yokins and he would order them. And I was like a little kid and I'm like, oh, gross, that's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> I see why now he loved them. <laughs> <laughs>